Yeah. So, anything anything good going on? Anybody got something good to say? Chucky Hepburn is in the portal, uh, and we're we're starting real awkwardly. Um, <laughs> Because this is not a great day. Uh, this is not a great day for Badger fans. For the the way we can talk about the state of college basketball. For a certain person employed in the athletic department at the University of Wisconsin. There is a lot of uneasy feelings and a lot of people who should feel very uneasy now that this move has happened. Um, but let's talk about the, the Chucky Hepburn of it all first. And then we'll give you the, the red meat and talk about the Greg guard of it all, because there is, and, and I'll get into this more, no, the, the tipping point shouldn't be an individual player, but the timing on this individual player in particular says a lot about where there is room to move and have a, a genuine Greg Gard conversation. But first, the Chucky Hepburn of it all. Chucky Hepburn is entering the transfer portal. Uh, I think officially Jeff Borzello of ESPN had it first and several, several other sources since then have confirmed it. Um, and according to Jeff Patrakis of the Milwaukee journal Sentinel, I believe he was first on the fact that he informed that Chucky Hepburn informed coaches last night of his plans to enter the portal. Um, so since then, uh, Jeff Patrikas of the Journal Sentinel has added a couple of quotes from Greg Gard over text that he said, we have a lot of love for Chucky. He's been a big part of our program. In today's college basketball, Players are making transactional decisions all over the country at every level. There's no time to complain about the system in place. We're dedicating all our energy right now into finding the next fits for our program. In fact, minutes after talking to Chucky about this, I was already pursuing another talented point guard who is in the portal. This is the reality of college basketball today. This also comes on the same same day. I mean, within 15 minutes of finding out that AJ Storr is headed to the University of Kansas. That's not particularly surprising either. That that, that was picking up a lot of steam. I mean, even, even from the very beginning. And, and from what I know about the Kansas NIL situation, and for those of you who do not know, my father uh, attended the University of Kansas. So I have more insight there. I talk to more people around Kansas fandom and find myself in Kansas corners of the internet more than your average Wisconsin Badger fan. Um, from my understanding of the Kansas NIL situation is that they can outbid anybody for anybody as long as Kansas wants to outbid for somebody. Uh, they, they have maybe the deepest pockets in the entire country and the NIL situation from season to season is fluid. Of course, uh, th those numbers aren't, aren't sticky season to season. Um, so, you know, maybe they don't have the largest payroll this year. Maybe it's Kentucky. But year in, year out, Kansas can compete with pretty much anybody. Um, but when it comes to Chucky Hepburn, this is a dagger of a loss. And I say that, although my stance throughout this offseason has been that Greg Gard has kept his roster together. Um, up until now, there was really no unexpected departures, no real rotation pieces that have been lost. And that's when you start really losing things 
you you start losing confidence in the, in the program. It's when you start actually losing real rotation pieces. First, you know, it, it was a couple of walk-ons, right? And you lose uh, Gus Yaldin, who never found his footing with the program, you know, had been at several high schools, several prep schools. You lose Connor Asijan, and that was bubbling throughout the year. And you lose AJ Store, which was expected uh, because of the money involved, kind of his personal tendencies. He's also a guy who's attended a large number of schools in the number of years that he's been playing basketball. You lose Isaac Lindsay to South Dakota State. But when you finally, like, you can withstand all of that. And, like, all of that combined isn't great. But when you add Chucky Hepburn into it is when you see, and, and funny enough, I was watching a television show earlier that kind of put this metaphor to a similar thing, right? When you have, when, when a plane crashes or when a plane has to go for an emergency land, it's never one thing when, it, when an engine failure forces up an emergency landing. It's never one thing that happens on a plane. It's cascading failures. And that is what this is right now for Greg Gard. It is cascading failures. It's not just one thing. It's not just Chucky Hepburn that's putting Greg Gard's, you know, job security at risk. It's not just one thing that is putting the, the dismay about this program over the top right now. It is, you take everything before Chucky Hepburn, combine it with Hepburn now, and it has all rounded itself into a big ball of cluster. <laughs> Even if it was just Chucky Hepburn, if it's just Chucky Hepburn and you take out everything else, that's probably fine. It doesn't, it doesn't feel good, but that's probably fine. If you lose Chucky Hepburn, but keep AJ Storr, Keep Connor Asijan. Keep Gus Yeldon. Keep even Isaac Lindsay. This probably feels better. It sucks. But there's other things there. It is the cascading failure now that has culminated into this. Culminated into this moment where I personally, and maybe I've been behind the eight ball on this. Maybe I've been behind the eight ball on this, uh, <laughs> Ryan Eilers. Maybe I've been behind the eight ball on this. We, we have reached a point of critical mass on, on this conversation, on, on the great guard conversation, because this also means you are not getting your plan A replacement for AJ store in the portal. Frankie Fiddler, longtime friend of Chucky Hepburn's high school teammate played basketball in, in the Omaha area growing up together. Long time now, there has been speculation that he and Chucky Hepburn were going to end up playing together this next season. Well, Frankie Fiddler was supposed to commit on Monday. Somewhere. That didn't happen. Wisconsin felt good about Frankie Fiddler for quite a long time. My worry was after he took that official visit to Wisconsin, they did not get an immediate commit. That, that did worry me. And... Fiddler did end up taking an official visit to Michigan State this past weekend. Now, reading between lines here, there's a lot of Fiddler, Chucky Hepburn, package deal, potentially in the works situation. Not even to Wisconsin. Maybe they go back home and play for Creighton. Frankie Fiddler's final four was Creighton, Nebraska, Wisconsin, Michigan State. Nebraska doesn't make a lot of sense anymore. Uh, because Nebraska has grabbed players like Gavin Griffiths from Rutgers that fill the that fill the um, role that a Frankie Fiddler would play. Now, Wisconsin's out of the mix. So that leaves Creighton and Michigan State. Creighton would make sense. Go back home, play in the Omaha area. It's based on comments from local Omaha radio hosts and chatter throughout insiders in the industry. It seems that there's a real possibility that like Frankie Fiddler wants to play close to home once is, is a little bit of a home body for Omaha. Uh, so, so playing at Creighton, you know, just outside of downtown Omaha, that could be valuable to him. The Michigan state thing between the lines that adds up a lot 
now given Chucky Hepburn's departure, that A.J. Hogard, Michigan State's starting point guard this season, is also going poorly. He's not going to be returning to East Lansing. You put that on top of the fact that Frankie Fiddler, who was supposed to commit Monday, pushed that off following his official visit to Michigan State just 48 hours prior. It's not going to feel, it's not going to be fun. It's going to be gross. And, and even given the fact that like I, I, as a Badger fan, have a lot of respect for the Michigan State program. I, I, and maybe that's just because I know that Tom Izzo and Greg Gard and Bo Ryan, there, there's a lot of mutual respect there. And maybe that's just rubbed off on me. But man, seeing Chucky Hepburn in that uniform, the, the same program that Johnny Davis did the bye-bye wave to, Tyler, Tyler Wall emulated it. It's it's going to be a shot in the heart. And and David Thiering here, uh, co commenting on YouTube. You can watch this uh, live, youtube.com slash at Scotty Six Pack. Oh, wait, I can, I can put these on the screen. Can't I? Yeah. Sorry, just getting on now. Uh, don't be sorry. <laughs> it is the middle of the day on a Thursday. We got to be asking serious questions now with Hepburn leaving guard. Serious ones. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, let's touch on the loss of Hepburn first and, and what might backfill that really quickly because Chucky Hepburn has played, I think it's 103 games in a Wisconsin uniform. I mean, he has started every single game. The only game he has missed, the only game that he has not played in since he, uh, arrived at Wisconsin was that big 10 tournament quarterfinal game that he missed this season. And then he came back so so that they could beat uh, Purdue in the next game in the semifinals. But he has he has appeared in 103 games. He has started 103 games, averages 32 minutes a game, averaged 9.8 points for his 9.8.8 points on his career. That's down slightly from a year ago. Uh, this past season, he averaged 9.2 compared to the 12.2 before when he was carrying a large chunk of the scoring load, but I think that was largely good. This season, Chucky Hepburn struggled a little bit from, from three based on his previous averages, but look, he, he is, this team has never looked right without Chucky Hepburn on the floor. He is a facilitator, a, a true point guard through and through that can facilitate the ball. And when he also adds his scoring punch, th this offense goes from middling to bad to totally great. And losing that, look, you, you can withstand losing AJ store. There's, there's games that AJ store shot you into and games that AJ store shot you out of. And this Wisconsin basketball coaching staff that like prides itself on consistency, prides itself on predictability. Th there's a certain mismatch of style there between AJ store and a great guard led coaching staff that just never felt quite right. Chucky Hepburn was that consistency that the offense loved. And, and with Chucky Hepburn there playing with Steven Crowell, playing with Max Klesman, there was always this, you knew a baseline level of what you were going to get. Now you lose that. Now, apparently, Greg Gard is going to try and find another point guard out of the portal. I, I think, of course, he has to do that because the other guy you have coming in, Daniel Freitag, look, he's he's going to be great. Daniel, Daniel Freitag is going to be good. He's going to be a really good point guard, a, a, a high-level talent out of Minnesota, won a state championship with the Breck School. He, he is a high-level athlete who can come in and have an immediate impact. But one of the things that made Chucky Hepburn so great, for example, was the ability for him to have an immediate impact on the roster as a starting point guard, as a freshman. One of the reasons he was able to do that was because he had a talent like Johnny Davis around him to handle that bulk of the scoring load his freshman season. Daniel Freitag is coming into a situation where there is not that go-to score on the roster. There is, not, there is not a loaded backcourt. There's not a loaded guy at the wing. Daniel Freitag is good, but there's a reason Greg Gard's comments immediately were, we're, we're going to go look for another point guard. 
look, there's a lot of players in the portal. The portal window is still open for 13 more days. Which means that even players that you don't think Wisconsin can go get now because they're not in the portal, right? There, there's going to be more players that enter the portal that Wisconsin could go get. But also, what if this does become a mass exodus now? This is the cascading failures an analogy to, to a plane crash, to a plane failure that I was referring to earlier. We have reached a point now where the lifeblood of your team on the floor is gone. A guy who has a badger tattoo, the guy who, after they lost to James Madison in the NCAA tournament, said, that's not what badgers do. Badgers don't go out in the first round. There's 13 more days. And, and also, like, because I know that we, we mentioned it just a little bit at, at the top, there is a, why is this portal window open for so long question? Like, I have this printed. Like, if you go to the NCAA like, website and go find the transfer portal windows for all of the sports, the window is open so long. And in sports like basketball, where there's tampering all the time, because the NCAA is a shell of itself. It doesn't have real enforcement you know, ability given court orders, restrictions, whatever. We need to get to a point where players are on contracts. We need, and I know it's going to be hard because you have a, a, a player base that is constantly changing. Players come in and come out every four years. We need to get to a point where players can be unionized. Players can bargain something that looks like it, right? I'm not even necessarily advocating for a certain model, but we need to get to a point where we can have legitimate restrictions on movement windows for players that are shorter than what we have now. The portal is open for a full month and a half. The portal's been open for a month. It doesn't close for another two weeks, which means what about Max Klesman? I don't think Max Klesman would leave. You know, he, he went to Wofford, is a Nina native. I don't think he wants to be anywhere other than Madison. But what if he gets called? What about Stephen Crowell? I don't necessarily think he wants to be somewhere other than Madison. That Lakeville pipeline is strong. There seems to be a lot of goodwill there built up between guys like him and Greg Gard with Tyler Wall, with Nate Reavers. What about Kamari McGee? Uh, he's another piece of this backcourt. Is he going to see this as an opportunity to expand his role? Or is he going to see this as an opportunity where, I don't know that a bigger role for me here is, is great. I don't think he necessarily wants to be somewhere else, especially with his health situation. He's currently rehabbing an injury. He's also a Racine native. But when the lifeblood of your team leaves, and that's what Chucky Hepburn really is. He's a, he's a vocal leader for this team. He has gotten better and better at playing that role through, throughout his three years in Madison. I'm not ruling anything out at this point. Uh, go, going, going through some of these other comments real quickly. Um, seriously, though, what is the alert to play basketball at Wisconsin? This is really bad. Yeah, this is really bad. This is not good. Um, Ryan also saying, so when does free tag hit the portal? Just kidding. Nervous laugh. Uh, yeah, I think Daniel free tag. And if you look, you know, obviously not hitting the portal, you know, yes. Nervous laugh. Um, he has a lot of affinity for Greg guard. If you look at, he, he underwent some off season surgery to, to clean some stuff up not too long ago. And he was told like, Hey, don't post anything while you're coming out of uh, sedation. And, and he posted something that's like a real big comment to like Greg Gard saying like, Hey, Gard, I got I got to get back to you. You're great. Um, I think he really likes Gard. And if Hepburn, or sorry, if Freitag comes in here and Gard's gone after one year, I, I think Freitag's gone too. I don't think that's necessarily, you know, you, you don't, um, it's the word I'm looking for. Uh, I think losing, losing a, single recruit or losing a single recruiting class to is fine at the expense of a head coach. You might be failing, right? You don't, you don't lose the forest for the trees here. Um, 
Ryan also saying this thing has already plateaued and I don't see a way that it improves under guard. Uh, I think McGee is going to have a big role next year. Adam Otto watching on YouTube as well. I appreciate you breaking the news. Things are looking a bit rough for guard. Need to see how he responds or his seat will get super hot. Uh, I'll come back to that in a second. And Adam saying, RIP, my love for college hoops died today. I get that. I get, look, I have a ton of, oh man, I love this sport. Like I, I am getting it. Mm. My dad went to the university of Kansas. I grew up on college basketball. I, I didn't play basketball growing up. Like I understand all that I understand about the game through studying, through individual film study, through reading books. I love this sport. This is a dagger. This is a gut punch. This hurts in a way that makes you feel gross about the sport in the way that it is now. This is a problem that needs to be solved. And yeah, it, it doesn't even feel like this feels so different than AJ store because AJ store was like, yeah, money. I get it. There was a genuine love for the program that you felt like Chucky Hepburn had. And you don't know exactly why Hepburn is leaving. I, I think it has something to do with he and Frankie Fiddler are going to end up playing together somewhere. But yeah, the sport's just not the same and it's never going to be the same. And, and look, this is players were always getting paid. The, the shoes ran the sport for a really long time. We had an FBI wiretap scandal. That's the only reason we have NIL now. And you're not putting, you're not putting the toothpaste back in the tube, but there, there's, there's a better situation than this, than the one we have now. Um, going back to Adam Otto, need to see how Greg Gard responds or his seat will get super hot. It's already really hot. This puts Greg Gard under a, oh, and somebody already used, used the word microscope. David, David Thering, uh, watching on YouTube. We're live on YouTube and on, uh, the website formerly known as Twitter right now, youtube.com slash at Scani six pack. Uh, and you can find us on the website formerly known as Twitter at Kedrick Stumbris. Um, David Thering used, I've been putting everything under a microscope for this program and in general, this off season. And uh, I assume that means next season, not off to a good start. Yeah. I, I, Greg Gard's seat is incredibly hot right now. Um, Ryan Volt saying the same thing. Is it not hot right now? He's on blast right now. Th this, this, this move makes this an incredibly difficult enterprise to defend Greg Gard. And those of you who have watched this show before, those of you who have listened to me on whatever podcast, read the words that I have written uh, on other parts of the internet before, right? I, I have been maybe one of the bigger Greg Gard defenders. I shouldn't say maybe. I shouldn't qualify like that. I have been one of the bigger Greg Gard defenders. This makes this really, really hard. And, and it's not even necessarily that this is Greg Gard's fault. I don't know that for sure. I, I am not saying that it is not. I am not saying that it is. But when you get to this point where, look, Max Klesman's a piece. I, I'm talking about the start returning starters to this team now. Because you lost AJ Store, you lost Chucky Hepburn, you lost Tyler Wall to eligibility. So your returning starters are Max Klesmet and Stephen Crowell. I think Stephen Crowell is really solid. I think he's a solid Big Ten center. I know that there's a lot of you know debate about that. Whatever. Max Klesmet's a piece. He's not really much of anything more than that. You don't have a feature guy in your starting five right now. That, to me makes it difficult to project this team going to the NCAA tournament next year. And that is knowing that like the preseason top 25s that have been rolling in have made Wisconsin like a fringe top 25 team before today. My thing about this making Greg Gard's seat hot now isn't even so much about just losing Chucky Hepburn. It's one, the cascading failures uh, metaphor that I was talking about earlier. But two, I have a really difficult time seeing without Chucky Hepburn on this team, 
this team doing what it needs to do in the 2024-25 season to keep Greg Gard employed in the universe, at the University of Wisconsin. Like, with, with what's on the roster now, what do you feel confident about? What do you feel confident about? Uh, this team went 11-9 and nine in the Big Ten last season. That was, it was a two-game improvement over the year prior. I, right now, the way the roster is constructed, and again, this comes with the caveat that like there's 13 more days until the transfer portal window closes, right? That's not the amount of time that you have to add players. It's the amount of time the players have to enter the portal. So there could be more players entering the portal that Wisconsin could be big on. There's more time for Wisconsin to lose more players to the portal. 13 more days. Absurd. Even though the portal's been open for a month. Um, I, I just don't know, knowing what we know about this roster now, how this team gets itself in a position for Greg Gard to keep his job. It's too late to do anything now. And I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Um. I think the big opportunity, and especially for those who are like, who are Greg Gard haters, who want to see him gone. I think this presents, and maybe maybe saying like, hey, especially for the Greg Gard haters, I like even for me now, who who has been a defender of Greg Gard. I think this loss presents otherwise a clean break opportunity a year from now that would not otherwise exist. Look. Oh, this team really might bottom out next year, and that's not going to be fun. But you lost Chucky Hepburn, okay. You're going to lose Stephen Crowell and Max Klesman. The core of this team is going to be done with, with its eligibility. Stephen Crowell will be gone. Max Klesman will be gone. Uh, what about, is Kamari McGee's eligibility gone after next season? Yeah, I think that's correct. Um, one, two, three, yeah. So you're going to lose a lot on this team, which then I think presents a real opportunity to build this program back from the ground up. You're going to have players like, John Blackwell in the roster that I think you're otherwise going to lose if if you get rid of Greg Gard after next season. You're going to have uh, Nolan Winter. You're going to have a Daniel Freitag potentially leave. Whatever you get in the upcoming uh, transfer portal or in in the upcoming recruiting class, uh, Daniel Freitag, Jack Robeson, um, and then Zach Kinzinger, who's supposed to be coming in in 2025. I know the Badgers are are really, really pursuing EJ Walker out of Kentucky in 2025. And I think he'd be a good piece, but after this upcoming season, you're going to have a really, really, really young team. And unless Greg guard can do something unexpected, it is a perfect opportunity to rip off the bandaid and build this thing back up. You go throw the bag at somebody I, and I don't know who it is. Look, TJ Otzelberger, which I think, I think to most is going to be like the ideal candidate for Wisconsin. I don't know what Iowa state's going to want to give him. I think he, uh, I know he's a Wisconsin guy, but go, go look at his resume. Like go to TJ Otzelberger's Wikipedia page. He keeps going back to Iowa state. He keeps going back to Ames. His wife is beloved there as a women's basketball icon. It's going to be hard to lure him away from Ames. I think, um, But I think after next season would be as good of a time as any to, to rip off the bandaid. And you think Greg, thank Greg guard for all that he's done. You think Bo Ryan for all that he has done because in some ways those, those two guys are of course linked, but you say it's, it's time. It's time to move in a different direction because something here is not working. Uh, I want to hit on a, a few of these comments in here quickly. Uh, Drew Jell watching on the website, formerly known as Twitter. Bucky McMillan is too perfect of a name. Uh, <laughs> I like that. I don't know. Man, Samford. 
to, and I know this is a little bit of tongue in cheek, but Bucky McMillan, of course, uh, author of Booty Ball down there in Samford, uh, at Samford University, S A M F O R D. Look, he was coaching what high school ball? It'll be four years ago now. I still think high school ball to Samford to Wisconsin is a big jump, but like he, that's definitely a brand of basketball that I think would translate well to this Wisconsin program. Give him a call. Why not? Uh, Ryan Volts, Chucky is one guy that I thought would stick around. Such a bummer. Very likable dude. Colossal disappointment. Yeah. And I think that's why the, 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 the thing makes this feel so much worse than AJ store is you just felt like Chucky Hepburn was guy who's going to stick around and why it gives you certain feelings about college basketball. Um, Carl Jenner, John, the timing after Indiana landed the top transfer yesterday, Omar Ballo, uh, who followed originally, uh, Tommy Lloyd from Gonzaga to Arizona when Lloyd got that job. And then, uh, Ballo now going from Arizona to Indiana, uh, is remarkable. Yeah. It's weird. Um, weird, weird. What? Look, Indiana's got money to throw around, right? No more ball is going to command a bag. Football Club David, watching on YouTube, youtube.com slash at Scotty Six Pack. The longer the Badgers keep guard, the more and more it hurts in recruiting. He is a <laughs> lame duck coach. Uh, great. First of all, great use of the word lame duck uh, or of the phrase lame duck. It's the right way to use it. Appreciate that. At the very least, elevate Krabenhoff to head coach, plan for next offseason. I don't think elevating Krabenhoff is, is the right move. He, he has never been a head coach, right? Uh, and I know Greg Gard was the same. Um, I, I think th this program should bring in somebody who has been a head coach at another level before. Uh, the, the more I, you know, read and analyze some of the, some of these coaching moves is you, you find value in finding guys who have been head coaches at other stops, even if it's lower levels, right? Lower levels and they become an assistant at a higher level, whatever. Um, but finding guys with past head coaching experience is good. Also, I just have a hard time believing that the next hire is going to be someone that falls, you know, from, from the same tree, another apple off of the same tree. Um, and that's not even just like discount, like not even because we, we have reached a, a, a breaking point with Greg guard. I think that is me speculating based on past behavior of the guy who will be making the hire of, of Chris McIntosh, right? He went outside of, outside of the family to make the football hire. He went outside of the family to make the men's hockey hire. And I think he'll go outside of the family again, uh, to make a men's basketball hire. Um, gizmo just got here. Are you a Wisconsin fan? And who are you? Uh, yes. Wisconsin fan content creator, um, reporter for badger notes. This is me. I'm Kedrick, uh, focused a lot on men's basketball, women's hockey, doing football stuff from time to time. Uh, and we do a lot of football stuff too. Uh, but those are the programs that I cover most in depth in person. Uh, so that is me follow along. You can find me on the website, formerly known as Twitter at Kedrick Stumbers, also here on the Scotty six pack podcast. Uh, we've been doing daily shows for quite a while. We took a break because I was, I went to New York, took a break, uh, waiting for transfer portal news to drop. Thought it was going to be positive news. Uh, was ended up, ended up being negative news. And now, we decided to jump back in for the negative news. So we're here six days a week going, going forward again. We'll be here six days a week uh, talking to all things Wisconsin sports, Badgers, Bucks, Brewers, Packers, and beyond. Uh, Hunter soon to be brother-in-law. Bigger question. Is this a lack of NIL money problem or a coaching problem? I don't think we know the answer to this yet. In some ways, people are going to say, you know, uh, of course it's a coaching problem. Of course, it's a not necessarily a, a X's and O's coaching problem, but it is a the person who is the head coach problem. I don't know a ton about Wisconsin's NIL situation personally. I, I I don't have sources there, but people that I do trust generally, um, they have said their sources have indicated that Wisconsin can be competitive with most programs, especially most of the big time. I get the impression that Wisconsin is less likely to overpay than other places are 
for certain players, especially for incoming players. They, they are more risk averse in that sense. So, and this is just speculation now. This is not reporting anything. Pure speculation. There may be a situation here where Frankie Fiddler got blown out of the water by promises from some school. Um, and Wisconsin was unwilling to match it. And Chucky Hepburn said, all right, I don't want to be here then either. I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know. I, and I, I, don't, I don't even think that sounds super likely, um, but... Um, Mark, I tried to explain how bad Wisconsin will be if they actually fire guard in game coaching wise. You don't know how good you have it until it's gone. Yeah. Look, I, th I think Greg guard is a really good in game coach. Um, I got a comment from somebody the other day in, in the DMS asking like, Hey, I think it'd be uh, a good idea for someone to go back because we talk a lot of times we talk about how guard is like good out of in plays out of timeouts and stuff like that out of bounce plays. Uh, it'd be good for someone to go back and actually watch the film in the off season and write up a longer form piece about it. Uh, longer form evaluation. That's something that I want to work on, but I just don't know if I'm going to have time to do it this off season. Um, but yeah, like by all accounts, right. A guard is guard is good in game coach. He, he understands the X's and O's. He gets guys going on ATOs. There's going to be some loss there, uh, but you, you go out and find a guy who can do it. And, and look, there's certain guys that are not good X's and O's coach that are good at other things, right? John Calipari uh, is kind of the prime example of this, right? He can recruit the heck out of talent, but he's not a good X's and O's coach. He's been stuck in old timey, you know, a decade ago basketball for, for a long time ago or for a long time now. That's not great. There, there's certainly downsides to firing Greg guard. And so like, uh, I've never been one to, to jump on this right away, especially given the fact that Look, Wisconsin was never good at basketball, basically, until, well, until um, uh, uh, Coach Bennett arrived. And then not consistently good until Bo Ryan. So, like, there, there is risk in going away from this now. But, like, uh, there, there's definitely the, you, you don't just make the appeal to, tra tra to tradition, right? That's a logical fallacy. Uh, Ryan Volts, did I see that Indiana or that Siegen committed to Indiana too? Um, that would be news to me. That would be news to me. I don't think that has happened. But if somebody wanted to uh, let me know, that would be good. Uh, the last I knew about a Siegen was that he was going to take a visit to Indiana. I do not believe he has committed anywhere yet. I, I I am poking around to see what, if anything, he has done. No, I I don't think I, I'm not I'm not seeing anything burned to the ground on the website formerly known as Twitter. Uh, so I do not think that Isijin has committed anywhere yet. Uh, Jeff Willis, being a guard hater doesn't make you wrong. Uh, no, not necessarily. Not necessarily. Uh, I, I guess I, I only use that terminology because for the last ugh, five years now, I, th I think there have been people, you know, calling for his head, despite like at one point in time, he had won two of three Big Ten titles, right? Um, and the great guard hater label just kind of like rolls off the tongue, tongue and has, it has stuck along from past times where uh, the label made more sense. Um, Mark D, again, the college basketball landscape has changed. NIL has made basketball worse. There's no mo more loyalty in anything anymore. Ah, I don't know. It, it's, all, it's always about the money. It's always about the money. Coaches change jobs for the money. The NFL, players sign contracts for the money. NBA, players go where they can get the most money. I'm never really going to fault people for making the right decisions for themselves and their families. Um, but I get it. The the movement windows make this feel more gross. And the uncertainties. I, I think it is less about people worrying about the money and loyalty. It's about the uncertainty in rosters year over year, which makes you feel like it takes away the, the impression of loyalty to anything other than the dollar, right? In the NFL, you can build 
you know, fan relationships for, for lack of a better term with, with players, because you know, they're going to be there for a certain period of time in college basketball right now, where there's no restrictions on player movement, except for, you know, the windows and uh, during which you can enter the portal. If you aren't a grad transfer, um, there's just no way to know who's going to be on your team year in and year out anymore. And that makes it harder to get a connection with your team, which in years past has been easier given that like fans are donors to universities. Fans are alums of the universities. They're students at the universities. It has for a long time been easier to feel a connection with collegiate sports than pro sports, right? We call it collegiate sports. There's a collegial sense to them. Now that, there's all there's no restrictions and, and look right now if players aren't going to be making real money if they're not going to be getting a real cut from the schools from the television contracts in which these athletic departments are raking in tons and tons of money look they should have that freedom of movement i'm i like i don't like the way this is now but from a moral ethical standpoint if they're not going to get a cut of the money from the things if they're not going to get a cut of them making athletic departments, tons and tons of money. They should be free to do what they want. If you want to make them not free to do what they want, get them caught. But yeah, this is gross. I don't, I don't like this. Um, football club, David, I say crap enough because I doubt they could get a long-term hire this late in the off season. Thanks for discussion. Oh yeah, sure. I guess if you're going to make a move right now, yeah, you all have a crap enough. Um, he's, he was definitely poked around in, uh, for a couple of different head coaching opportunities this off season elsewhere but I, I don't think they're not going to make a move on guard now it's it's just too late it doesn't make sense and, and you don't want if, if and somebody else said this you don't want guard going into his last season as a lame duck coach you also don't want grabbing off as an interim lame duck right you're not going to be able to recruit anybody then for 2025 at least if you keep greg guard now you give him a chance to coach himself into his job for another year um and you give them a chance to keep together a recruiting class. I don't think otherwise that ele elevating Krabinoff now and firing guard is, is a responsible move. <laughs> Hunter, Sean Miller, question mark, question mark. I, my impression based on Sean Miller's previous stops is that he wants to be at a basketball first school. And I don't really think Wisconsin is definitely that. I don't even think Wisconsin is necessarily a football first school, but they're a 1A, 1B situation enough that I don't think fits Miller's past stops enough. Uh, I don't know that it makes a ton of sense. Uh, Drew Gentile watching on the website, formerly known as Twitter. A new coach with the NIL collective beer next season, next off season can save the program. Yeah, if you feel bad about this today, man, Go, go drink some varsity collective gold nail. Um, when is that? That's dropping at Memorial union. The, the first, the first tapping is dropping at some this week, next week, something like that. Uh, yeah. If you're not liking this, that that's one way you can help save the program. <laughs> um, Mark D. So as of two weeks ago, Chucky was helping Wisconsin recruit Frankie. Frankie then decides to delay his commitment date and Chucky transfers. I wonder what happened between then and now. Uh, what happened between then and now, and we covered this a little bit earlier in the show, was a recruiting dead period over the Final Four weekend and National Championship game. Those dead periods, look, coaches don't like those dead periods with players uncommitted. It gives guys a lot, a lot, a lot of time to think and to overthink and to change their minds about things. There was the dead period, and then that dead period moved immediately into Frankie Fiddler taking an official visit at Michigan State this past weekend, about, what's that, six days ago? This Monday, he was supposed to commit. Frankie Fiddler was supposed to make his commitment decision. That decision date got delayed, and now here we are just a couple of days later. Those are the things that happened between then and now. I think pretty reasonable people can fill in the dots uh, with some educated guesses because that's all I have right now too. Uh, the Red Shed, do we have any confirmed source that UW is in top is top thirty in NIL? So here's the problem with NIL reporting: it is very hard to get people on the record about NIL reporting 
for um let's go with three reasons for three reasons that come to head the first is that the situation is always fluid there there is not necessarily the same pot of money this year as there was last year or next year or the year after that or the year before that um the world is new enough now that fundraising is coming at some points from the same pots as people who donate to the athletic department directly. And in some worlds, different pots, different, different people altogether. Um, so you can't even necessarily say, well, we know we have this much money for facilities. So we know that we are also rich in NAL money. It's, it's really not the same, uh, in some situations it is, but in some situations it's different. And I know that's couching it, you know, both ways, but it's hard to tell. And that makes the situation fluid where certain people are going to be willing to donate money in a certain year because they get excited about the program. They get excited about, you know, the potential team run. Uh, a certain player excites them. And sometimes that money doesn't exist the next year, right? So like saying Wisconsin is top 30 in NIL, maybe that's true this year. Doesn't make it true next year. Didn't make it true the year prior. Uh, so because the situations are always fluid across 362 division one programs realistically we're talking about you know uh, a window of 50 to 100 programs when you put in just the power conference teams but it's hard to say that the second reason why reporting on this is difficult is because a lot of people's sources for player movement things for uh reports on injuries uh, for coaching moves, whatever the same people who are involved in the collective, who are willing to give you, you know, some kind of stuff on background as sourced information are a lot of the same people who give you information about what's going on with the team. So they don't want to out themselves as a collective source and have you burn and have them burn their bridge as a source to like the goings on day to day within the team, within the athletic department, whatever. Um, and you don't want to burn them as a source. You don't want to necessarily as a reporter, you speaking of the grander, you not you as any individual, but a reporter doesn't necessarily want to push a, a collective source to go on the record with certain information, uh, to leak certain information, hard numbers, whatever, because they know they'll get shut out. And they'll potentially lose a source to other, you know, aspects of the program that they that they also really need. Uh, and the third reason that collective reporting is really hard is that some of these, like, some sites, some outlets also have their own, like, advertising deals with the collectives. So there, there is a business entanglement there that makes good reporting on collective stuff difficult in its own right too. It, it, it's, it's really, it's, it's, it's hard. It's, it's a new landscape. It's, it's hard to do. So that being said, do we have any confirmed source that UW is top 30 in NAL? The, the yes, no answer to that is no, not necessarily, but there are people who feel good about the NIL situation. And most of the time, all you get from a school is people either saying, yeah, we feel good about our situation relative to our competition, or no, we feel bad about our uh, situation relative to our competition. Mark D, I'm kind of afraid if they do fire guard, my dad went to Notre Dame and they decided to let their longtime coach go and took a big step back in recruiting and wins. I don't know if Wisconsin could survive that. Um, yeah, there's, a, there, there's risk. There's always risk in making a coaching move. You don't know what is going to happen. Um, hmm. I want to make sure that I am up to date on all the information here before we, uh, call this one over. But yeah, uh, I think that's really all the information we have at this point. Um, Hepburn Fiddler and Kyle to Creighton, Nebraska or Omaha. I don't know what's going on with William Kyle. I, I really have no idea. Uh, he, he is the third piece of this, what are they, are they Bellevue East Bellevue West? Uh, I can't remember the name right now. Uh, the, the three high school teammates who have been playing 
you know, basketball together their entire lives. William Kyle, of course, went to South Dakota State, uh, played for the Jackrabbits, high level talent there in the front court, Frankie Fiddler on the wing, first team all summit league talent at Nebraska Omaha, and then Chucky Hepburn in the backcourt, making up this this trio that there was a lot of speculation early that three of them wanted to team up. It seems at least Fiddler and Chucky want to team up. I don't know what's going on with William Kyle at this point. I, I don't think that he's going to end up landing with the other two. I think it's going to be Fiddler and, and Hepburn somewhere. Um, so that's that. I, I think we're going to wrap it up here because we've been going for, for 50 minutes. What? <laughs> I don't know how true this is, but somebody... <laughs> Uh, somebody is telling me a different uh, destination, potential destination for it. Burn with a wild NIL number that uh, I had not heard of yet before. Um, but I guess I could see it. All right. I think we're going to wrap it up there. Uh, if you are new here, uh, be like Mark, be like Mark, Mark D here, uh, who, by the way, subscribed, uh, subscribe to us on YouTube, youtube.com slash at Scotty six pack. We are here. Scotty six pack six days a week. Took a short break waiting for transfer portal news to break. Uh, but here we are back again. Uh, the only podcast covering all things Wisconsin sports, Badgers, Brewers, Bucks, and beyond six days a week. Oh, man. Follow me on the website, formerly known as Twitter, at Kedrick Stumbrus. We'll be back tomorrow with probably more fallout from this, uh, more potential fallout from whatever is going on with the football transfer portal. Both the football and basketball transfer portal windows are open right now. Also, also the hockey transfer portal windows, right? This is transfer portal shenanigans all across. We have the NFL draft coming up soon. Uh, I'll probably be joining our friends of the show, Sam Jamini and Noah Clark over on their show very soon. Again, snap the pigskin talking things, NFL draft. Um, so we'll break down some, some Packer stuff here very soon as well. Tough day. Keep your heads high. We'll be back to you. Talk to you all again very soon. <sighs> on Wisconsin.